Hey guys, this is Ghost Spit Miner coming at you from the power of YouTube through the internet itself. Okay guys, so in today's video, we're going to be upgrading this old HP laptop just by adding a $20 SSD. You'll see a world of a difference. Stay tuned for the video guys so I can show you how to do it. Okay guys, so these will be the first couple screws will be taken off during this disassembly to get to that hard drive. Okay, and here we go. So let's go ahead and grab our trusty screwdriver and start by unscrewing the outside screws on the back of the laptop. And before we do that, let's go ahead and disconnect the battery. And let's grab that screwdriver once more and our sponger tool. So these two things are pretty much all you'll need during this disassembly process. Also, a magnetic tray would help since there's going to be a lot of screws and again, you don't want to lose any of these screws because that will be a hassle trying to find them. So let's just use a magnetic tray just like that and here we go. Pretty easy first couple of steps. Uh, nothing fancy about this. Just take all the screws off the back of here. And let's go ahead and disconnect the CD drive on the side. And also this little cover right here is actually, you're going to need the sponger tool to pop that up. This is what's going to be holding the upgradable RAM and the Wi-Fi card. These have a little washer holding those in place so those actually don't get disconnected. They just stay right there. And let's take off the internal screws, just like in the picture. And there's going to be three more screws right inside the CD drive. Let's start by taking these out. Here we go. These screws are a little bit different, so it's really hard to mix them up. Let me go ahead and show you how the screw looks. As you see, silver and pretty flat. So don't worry about mixing those up because those are very unique compared to the black outside screws. And let's go ahead and flip it around and start working on the inside of the laptop. So let's grab that sponger tool once more. And let's start by popping the front of it up. The reason why I like these thinner sponger tools is it's really hard to break your computer or make a mark on your computer. And let's go to speed it up a little bit. I like to start with the front and work my way back to the back of the laptop. And on the equal sides to make it even. Okay, again with a sponger tool, we're going to start by lifting up the keyboard. You're going to start right by the back of the keyboard by the escape key, golden. Go ahead and be nice and gentle, just wiggle it until you hear some clicks. There we go. And here comes the keyboard straight up just like that. You can just work your way across the escape key across just like that. Nice and slow, you'll start hearing it pop up. Now let's work on that ribbon cable. So right here on the black side of it, you're gonna lift that up just like that. A little easier to use your fingers. Here we go, let's lift it up and just gently pull the ribbon cable out. Now we can put the keyboard assembly out of the way. And that's the inside of the keyboard chassis. These will be the screws and cables we'll be taking out on this assembly, uh, this assembly process. So let's start with these screws right over here. And the two ribbons. So 
Let me go to show you how these screws look. Again, they are different from both the CD screws and the back screws. These are a little bit smaller in size. So again, pretty hard to mix them up. And on this one, you're gonna pull the white portion of the retaining clip up and gently remove those ribbon cables. If you want to be fancy, you can also use like a tweezer set. My hands are too fat, so I can't get my fingers in there. So I'm using a tweezer set to pull that up. You can always be nice and gentle with these. So you, it's gonna be pretty hard to replace them. And the whole plastic cover comes straight up off the chassis, just like that, once you get those removed. And this is what we're looking for. So we can put that to the side. Pretty nice touch pad and all that assembly is right there on the back. So let's go to get to that hard drive. So on top of the hard drive is going to be another ribbon cable. So again, lift the black tab up, pull out. And it looks like it's for the USB and uh, volume and audio module right there. So go ahead and disconnect that. You don't want to hurt it, so put it out of the way. Come straight out. And what you want to do is lift up on the hard drive and it comes straight out. And there you go, disconnect the SATA port right there. And that's the old hard drive. Here's the screws to get into that hard drive, I guess you can say chassis. Let's go ahead and disconnect that and put the new SSD in there. Again, another easy process overall. Really, you just need two tools, your trusty screwdriver and your sponger tool. Again, these screws are different as well, so they're silver, and since you just took them off, you shouldn't be able to mix them up right away. So let's go ahead and take that out of there. Keep the orientation the same on both of them so you don't mix them up. Everything looks good. Put the old hard drive out of the way, and let's go ahead and connect the SSD to this little hard drive uh, chassis. Fits like a glove, nothing too fancy about it, but this does make a world of a difference. This hard drive is a 128 gigabyte hard drive, uh, sorry, 128 gigabyte SSD, and it's gonna make a world of a difference a lot faster than the hard drive we had in there before. Um, and it's a $20 hard drive, so super easy fix to a lot of the slowing issues you might be having, especially with the mechanical drives if you dropped it and you start noticing a lot of weird sounds coming from it. But overall that's the way you want it to look after you install it into the hard, uh, hard drive mount. Go ahead and plug back in your SATA port right there. And let's go ahead and just push down on it. Get it as flush as possible. You can manhandle this part, it won't hurt anything. It kind of just sits right there snug between the chassis. And there it is guys. So let's go ahead and put it all back together. It's going to be the opposite of the install again. So let's go ahead and speed it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and put the keyboard back on, make sure it's connected to the ribbon cable and it has three attachment points right here. So just press down equally on each side to make sure you draw the clips. Just make sure it's perfectly in place, just like that. And let's go ahead and get the chassis to do the same thing. Just wait till you hear those clips in place. There we go. Looks good. 
And let's go ahead and flip it back to the back side and screw it back in. So I always like to start with a CD tray first. So let's grab those silver flat screws and let's put those in place so we don't forget about them. And pretty much it's easy from here. Just grab all your screws, put everything back where it came from and you'll be good. Put the CD tray back in there. Screw that in place. And just put all your other screws back. Nothing too crazy about the assembly process. Again, it's the opposite of the disassembly process, of course. And at the end of this, you want to make sure you have no screws remaining. Put your little cover back on there. Screw that in place. And lastly, go ahead and put your battery back on. And there we go, guys. Your PC now has a SSD in a set of a old, slow hard drive. This will make a world of difference, guys. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it. So depending on what you want to do, you can either get one of these nice USB to SATA um, connectors, and you can transfer your old data from your previous hard drive to your new SSD. Of course, that is if you have important information on there, you can do that. Um, but let's say, just like this drive, it had some crashes. It was crashing, couldn't figure out why. Could have added some virus on there. So I'm going to go ahead and dispose of this properly. And I use my USB boot drive from Windows 10 to actually install a brand new Windows 10 operating system. Go ahead and click this link right here so you can see how to do that. Anyways, guys, this is Ghostbit Miner coming at you from the power of YouTube through the internet itself. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Ghostbit Miner out.